the Transformers, they're still making this shit. Hello everybody, it's time to talk about yet another Transformers movie, The Last Night. Directed once again by Michael Bay and starring Mark Wahlberg and Anthony Hopkins. And usually I start these things off with a quick and dirty plot summary, so here we go. There are robots. There are people. There are explosions. There's a story of sorts, and Anthony Hopkins is slumming it. I really don't know what else to say. This movie is a chaotic mess. The story makes very little sense, even compared to the movies that came before it, which is remarkable. This time around, Transformers have been declared illegal, and there is some sort of military organization called the TRF, or Transformers Reaction Force, and their job is to hunt down and destroy any remaining Transformers on Earth, and didn't we just go through this plot in the last movie? I could have sworn we did. And Josh Dumel is back, and he has apparently allied himself with the TRF, but really he's just working with them undercover on behalf of the military, who are still on the side of the Autobots, and why this TRF mercenary organization gets to operate in the open while the military has to operate in secret. I just, I, I, I don't know. And I know it's been kind of a common thing with base Transformers where the Transformers are basically secondary characters in their own movie, but even considering that, Optimus Prime is in remarkably little of this movie. At the end of the last movie, we saw him flying off into outer space because he can do that now. And he does arrive on Cybertron, where he meets Quintessa, who is kind of loosely based on the Quintessons from the original cartoon, and she turns him evil. A little too easily, in fact. But he's only evil for about five minutes, really. So all that stuff in the trailer, teasing Optimus Prime fighting the other Autobots, it was a big cock tease. Mark Wahlberg is still around as Cade Yeager, which... Still does not sound any less silly, and he's still allied with the Autobots. And bless his heart, he's doing what he can with this absolute mess of a script. His daughter is currently studying at Written Out of the Script University, so she's nowhere to be found. In place of his daughter, he befriends a 14-year-old streetwise urchin, played by Isabella Monaire, who... All things considered was actually not that bad. I kind of liked her performance. And thankfully, she is not sexualized like Nicola Peltz was in the last movie because even Michael Bay won't go there. And she has her own little mini Transformer, which is basically Wally. His name is Squeaks, spelled with a W. Because reasons. And Mark Wahlberg also has a new comedy sidekick, who is not really annoying, but also not terribly funny. Bumblebee is still around, and there is a point where he can actually talk again. Briefly. It doesn't last. And unfortunately, he was given some terrible dialogue for the few seconds he was able to speak. And at some point, all of our heroes meet up with the British Megan Fox, who's played by Laura Haddock, and she was fine. There was nothing wrong with her performance or anything, but... God, her appearance in this movie just... They really want her to be the new Megan Fox, and they're not even trying to hide it. And at some point, they all meet up with Anthony Hopkins, who is playing this kind of British aristocrat, but he's also insane, so he says a lot of stupid shit. He's basically trying to play a comedy character, and good lord, it's not working. It's really not. I never want to hear that man say the word dude again. Ever. And it's through him that we learn the Transformers have actually been on Earth dating all the way back to the time of King Arthur, and Hopkins belongs to this ancient order of Transformers allies known as the Witwickens. Witwickens. Shoot me. And at some point, they have to go find the Staff of Merlin, because that factors into the plot somehow. And we do briefly see Merlin in this movie, who is played by Stanley Tucci, and he's drunk. And at first, when I heard about that, that sounded kind of awesome. Okay, Stanley Tucci playing drunk Merlin. I'm in. He's in the movie for about five minutes. So close. Y you almost had something there, movie. Almost. And you pissed it all away. There's also a point where John Turturro shows up again, but it's basically just a glorified cameo. I don't even know why he was in this movie. 
And also we find out Earth is Unicron. Surprise! But if you're hoping to actually see Unicron do anything in this movie, no. Doesn't happen. Maybe in the next movie. And there will be a next movie. All that promotional material that said, see how it all ends, that was bullshit. But you already knew that because they announced they were going to make a sixth movie before they even finished the fifth. So I don't know who the fuck they thought they were fooling. As far as the robots are concerned, we have a few new characters here and there. Uh, Hot Rod is in this movie and he's French. I don't know why he just is. And we get a few new Decepticons as well because Megatron is back. He's not Galvatron anymore, and he doesn't have that weird Galvatron transformation that he had in the last movie. No, he's just back to being plain old Megatron. No explanation. And he's in slightly more of this movie than Optimus Prime. And there's this really weird part of the story where he makes a deal with the TRF to hunt down the Autobots. And I don't know why I did not understand that for the life of me. Your entire objective is to get rid of all the Transformers on Earth, so you're allying yourselves with Transformers. And the evil ones, no less. What the fuck are you doing? And part of his deal with the TRF involves freeing some of his fellow Decepticons from prison, none of whom we've ever seen before. And two of them are seen on camera for about 10 seconds and then never mentioned again, so I don't know what the fuck the point even was. And one of them is named Nitro Zeus. Nitro Zeus. That name is so lame, it sounds like something I would have come up with when I was 13. And what really strikes me about this movie, apart from how completely nonsensical the story is, is just how poorly put together it is. I heard a rumor that this movie was going to be three hours long. It ended up being about two and a half. But looking at the editing in this movie, I can believe it was originally three hours and Michael Bay was forced to hastily trim it down to two and a half after Paramount told him, no, Michael, you cannot release a three-hour Transformers movie. No. There are so many shots in this movie where a character is in one position and they cut to a different camera angle and they've instantly changed positions. And during some of the allegedly comedic scenes where the Autobots are humorously arguing with each other, they are going back and forth so fast with each line and there is no pause between any of them, no time to process any of the jokes, even some of the visual gags are blink and you miss it. There's a car chase in this movie and there's a moment in that car chase where Anthony Hopkins flips another driver the bird and you see his middle finger about as long as you just saw mine. It's about half a second and then immediately cuts away. Just nothing in this movie has time to fucking breathe. This movie needs an IV of Ritalin and maybe that would calm it down a bit. I really don't know what else to say. It's a fucking mess. It's Poorly edited, the story makes no sense, the comedy's still not funny, the Transformers are still secondary characters in their own movie. Oh, and there's yet another moment where they briefly tease the death of Optimus Prime. As if it would fucking matter if he died. He'll just get better again. He died once before, it didn't slow him down for long. Megatron has died twice. Possibly a third time in this movie, it wasn't really clear, but doesn't matter. Even if he dies, they'll just bring him back. The whole thing just seems like it's a two and a half hour setup for the next movie, where they can tell the real story they want to tell about Quintessa and Unicron and Cybertron and all that, and we're just killing time until then. I'd probably have to go back and watch the other movies again to get a good comparison, which I don't really want to do, but... Honestly, I think this might be the worst movie they have made so far. Even worse than Revenge of the Fallen, and that was made right after the writer's strike. I don't know what this movie's excuse is. I guess at this point, I can only hope they finally hit rock bottom and there's nowhere to go but up. So, hopefully the next movie will at least be a little bit better. I don't know. We'll see. I don't have high hopes. And I would say don't bother seeing this movie, but I know a bunch of you will anyway because these movies are incredibly popular for some reason. I don't get it. I never will. And I think I've said all I can say about Transformers The Last Night. So till next time, take care.